Can you see it? Absolutely perfect. Okay. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Carolina Araujo from IMPA, who will talk on birational geometry of Calabria pairs and three-dimensional Cremona transformations. Thank you, Jesus. Um, actually, I would like to first start by thanking the organizers for the, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to give this talk. Um, so the content of my talk is um, a little bit off the, the main topics of the conference, but hopefully it's okay. <clears throat> so uh, I will talk about birational geometry of Calabial pairs and in particular some uh, three-dimensional Cremona transformations. Uh, sorry, let me just... Uh, okay, so um, I would like to start by saying that this is a joint work with Alessio Corti and Alex Massarenti and uh, we will be working over the complex throughout this, this talk. So let me start by um, motivation, motivating the study of birational geometry of Calabial pairs uh, by considering a question about automorphisms of K3 surfaces. So we, we now fix a smooth quartic surface in P3, and we are interested in understanding its automorphism group. So there is this uh, question of uh, Giza tooling. Uh, which, is, which asks whether every automorphism of such quad quartic surface D is induced by a birational self-map self -map of the ambient space. So we learned from this question in a paper of Ogizo, where he actually constructed uh, some very interesting examples. In particular, he answered this question uh, negatively. So he produced a, K, a smooth quartic uh, K3 surface in P3 uh, with automorphism group uh, isomorphic to Z in such that no automorphism is induced by a Cremonic transformation of the three-dimensional ambient space. And then he, um, he moved on to consider more refined versions of this questions, of this question, namely um, he now asked which automorphisms of D are induced by a birational self-map of the ambient space. Um, so this is an example of what we call the, the ambient space P3 together with this quartic hypersurface, smooth quartic hypersurface D is what we call um, a Calabria pair. So what I would like to discuss today is uh, to, to describe ways of studying the birational geometry of this pair. But before I move on, let me just uh, make a few remarks of, um, to, to help you appreciate why this, why this question is, uh, is meaningful. So if you fix now any smooth hypersurface of any degree in, uh, in the projective space, let's say of dimension at least, uh, at least two, hypersurface of dimension at least two, and you want to understand its, uh, its automorphism, then uh, from this theorem of Matsumura and Monsky from 1964, except in the, in the special case when n equals to two, so we have a surface of degree four, so that is exactly a quartic k uh, three surface in P3. So it, it, except in this case, all the automorphism group, uh, all the automorphisms of the hypersurface are induced by a linear automorphism of the ambient space. So I wrote it um, using this uh, surjective group homomorphism. So on, on the left, we have the automorphism group of the pair, which uh, for me means just the automorphism of the ambient space that stabilize D and hence induce uh, an automorphism of D. Okay, so the case that we are left to study is precisely the uh, case of a K3 surface in P3, a smooth K3 surface in P3. So in this case, we want to understand this automorphism group. And uh, so the first observation is that those, the subgroup consistent of automorphisms that come from linear automorphism, the ambient space is, uh, is finite. So this is just, um, just uh, is a consequence of the fact that the D does not have a uh, non-trivial global vector fields. And on the other hand, there are many examples where the automorphism group of D is infinite. So, so the question in a, in a sense is where do this automorphism come from? 
And, um, and so we want to understand which ones come from the, are induced by cremonic transformation. So let me just introduce some more notation. So I will denote by beer of the pair. So this is the group of uh, cremonic transformations of P3 that stabilize D, that sends D to T. So in particular, it will induce uh, a birational self map of D, but since D is a minimal surface, then this is in fact uh, an automorphism of D. So we have this group homomorphism and a uh, Giza Tulin or Giza question may be rephrased as asking what is the image of this group homomorphism. But here we are, we are interested more generally in understanding the kernel or even the structure of this, of this group. Um, okay, so before I, I start addressing this, this question, let me discuss a little bit uh, about, let me just um, make a quick discussion about the Cremona group in general. So the Cremona group in dimension N is just the group of birational self maps of PN. And it contains the, uh, the automorphism group of PN, but it of course contains many more elements. So by, um, and so let me just give you an example of this. So the simplest uh, non-biregular Cremona transformation of uh, projective space is the standard quadratic transformation of P2. And so let me just quickly uh, remind you the, 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 the basic diagram that describes the behavior of this, uh, of this map. So it contracts the three coordinate uh, lines to the three coordinate points and it's an isomorphism um, on, the tor on the torus, on the complement of the three lines. So, uh, and it's a, it's a classical theorem by Neder Castronovo that uh, in fact, the birational, the, the Cremona group in dimension two can be generated by the automorphisms of P2 and this, uh, this quadratic transformation. And this may naively make you think that you can understand uh, easily this group, but actually uh, the, the structure of this group uh, has been much investigated. And only recently we have learned some, uh, some very basic answers to very basic questions about this group. So for instance, let me just mention this theorem by Cantal and me from 2013, where they prove that the, the Cremona group of the plane is not a simple group. And also another important question that was only um, recently answered was a, a complete classification of finite subgroups of, uh, of the Cremona group of the plane. So this, this classification started with works of Bertini in the 19th century, and it was only accomplished, finished recently by works of um, Dolgachev and Skovsky. And there are a lot of people that worked in the problem in, the, in, in between. Okay, so um, another other types of results include describing some special subgroups of the, of the Cremona group in the plane. And I would like to bring one example that is going to be um, relevant for what we are discussing, which is this uh, characterization of what is called the symplectic Cremona transformations of the plane. So we fix the meromorphic, the, the, the canonical meromorphic volume form on the torus, we extend it to P2. And then it, it acquires a simple pose along the three uh, coordinate lines. And, uh, and we are interested in understanding the subgroup of the, the group of Cremona transformations, which uh, preserve this meromorphic volume form. And uh, so this group was uh, described by Blanc uh, in 2013. So he shows that there is, the, well, there's this part of the, the, the group, the, the part to the left, which preserves the, the torus. So this is just the torus, uh, the torus acting by translations and this uh, SL2Z, which acts by, um, by monomial transformations. And then there is this, uh, this, this, this one uh, element, Fremona transformation of order five that you have to add to to, to this to actually get the full, um, the full group of symplectic transformations. So here I would like just to, uh, to point out an open problem, which is to, to generalize this, uh, this description uh, to higher dimensions. So it is not known what is the, the, the as far as I know, uh, it's still unknown the, the, the group of Cremona transformations of PN that preserve this, uh, this natural volume form. 
Okay, so let me discuss now the Cremona group uh, in higher dimensions. So in, in contrast with this, uh, this theorem of Nedre Castel Novo, um, it's, known that, so it's known that one cannot expect anything like this in higher dimensions. So Ilda Hudson proved already in 1927 that for any, uh, for any n greater or equal than three, then the Cremona group in dimension n cannot be generated by elements of bounded degree. So very different than the, than the case of P2 where you have automorphism, it's just a degree one and then one quadratic transformation. So this, uh, so there's no, no really simple set of, uh, of generators for, for this group. Um, however, some there, there are other techniques that uh, that can be used to to describe this group, and then let me just mention this recent theorem of Blanc, Lamy, and Zimmerman that show that um, that in, in higher dimensions the 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 Cremona group is still not simple, so they produce several um, surjective homomorphism to the cyclic group group in two elements. And let me just note that this is very different than the two dimensional case. So even though the Cremona group in the plane is non-simple, any quotient is non-abelian and infinite. So this is a very different from, from the higher dimensional case. Okay, so now I would like to, um, to, to move on to discuss the birational geometry of Calabi pair. So let me just first define it um, precisely. So a Calabi pair is a pair consisting of a terminal projective variety, um, uh, a hypersurface, which is um, a linear equivalent to, to the anti-canonical class, and such that the pair is log-canonical. So, for instance, the example that we've been looking at is the case when, uh, when X is, is projective space Pn and D is a hypersurface of degree n plus 1 um, under some restrictions on the, on the singularities. Okay, so let me uh, remark also that once you have a Calabial pair, uh, there is a unique, up to scaling, uh, meromorphic volume form on, on X such that uh, it, it is non-vanishing and it has a, a pole, a simple pole um, along D. So this is to say that the divisor of this, uh, of this meromorphic volume form is uh, minus D. And we denote the, I, I, this, is a, this is a definition, we define the birational group of the pair XD to be the birational group uh, the, the group of birational self maps of X that preserve up to scaling this, this volume form. Okay, so, um, and, and now the problem, or at least one, um, one way to, to, to pose a problem that we are, that we, we've been studying is to given a Calabia pair to determine the birational group of the pair. We actually, uh, ask also other questions, which I will bring up uh, later on. Uh, but let me just recover the examples that we have seen. So, for instance, when uh, this problem, this problem of determining the, the birational self maps of uh, Pn that preserve this volume form is, uh, is an example of uh, such problem here, the divisor D is precisely the sum of the hyperplane sections. And also, uh, we were looking also at the case when we had a, a smooth quartic surface in P3. And let me recall that my first definition of a birational, the birational group of the pair in this case was, uh, was different. So we, I, dis, I defined it to be the, the, the group of birational self maps of P3 that, um, that stabilize D. But it turns out that in this case, this is the same thing as uh, preserving the volume form omega d. So this, this two uh, definitions, in fact, uh, coincide. So more generally, let me just make this remark that if the pair is not only log canonical, but it's in fact canonical, uh, then, uh, then, then the same is true. The, the group of birational self maps, in the, in, as, a, as I defined, but as, a, as, as preserving the volume form, uh, is precisely the, the the group of birational self maps of P3 that um, that stabilize D. And in this case, we have a group uh, homomorphism from the birational group of the pair 
to the birational group of D. So uh, D being more generally, there is no need for this to be actually the, the automorphism group. So we usually have this homomorphism that we are going to, um, to explore. And let me also remind you of this example of the standard quadratic transformation. And this is just to, um, to remind you that the, the, the canonicity assumption is really necessary. So uh, this, the, 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 the standard Cremona transformation, quadratic transformation is an example of uh, a birational self maps of P, P2 that preserve the, the volume form associated to the union of the three coordinate lines. On the other hand, it does not restrict to a birational self map of the, of the union of these three lines. Um, okay, so let me go back to this problem, to the problem that we are considering and let me state our first result. So our first result says the following. So if you want to, if you want to have some interesting uh, group for the pair, then your, your pair must be special. In other words, if when, when X, when the pair is terminal, uh, X has Picard number one, and the and the Picard group of D is is uh, obtained by restriction from that of the ambient space. Then the birational group of the pair is nothing but the automorphism group uh, of the pair. So, in particular, for um, for uh, P n for for um, hypersurfaces in Pn, then this is saying that if we have a very general hypersurface of degree n plus one, then the birational group of the pair is, uh, is just the automorphism group. So this, this tells us that if you want to, to use these techniques to, uh, to produce interesting um, subgroups of the Cremona group, then you have to choose this, uh, this hypersurface D in, in a special way somehow. And so this now I come to theorem B. So this is uh, what we have. Uh, we started to look at more degenerate cases and we started the, to looking at a, the case when D is again a quartic surface in P3, but now we do not assume it is smooth. We, uh, we take a general quartic with one singular point. And then we actually compute this birational group and it is a, a semi-direct product of a, a group G, which I will describe, and the cyclic group of order two. And this G is a, a form of GM uh, over the function field of the plane. So uh, by a form of GM over, over a field, I mean that this is a, a, a complex, uh, sorry, this is an algebraic group defined over this, uh, of this, over this field which is not isomorphic to GM, but after a base, uh, after um, a field extension, a finite field extension, then it becomes isomorphic to GM. Okay, so uh, if, let me try to make things a little bit more explicit. So this is the general uh, form of a quartic hypersurface of degree four with one singular point at, at the point, um, at, let me call it the origin, which is the point one zero zero zero. And actually this theorem can be made uh, very explicit. We can write down what are all the birational transformations, all the Cremona transformations of P3 that stabilize such D. And this is how you write them in terms of, um, of the coefficients of of the quartic and uh, where here F and G are arbitra arbitrary homogeneous polynomials uh, satisfying this degree condition. So this is, so this is, uh, this is for the G, but we can also write down explicit, um, explicitly the elements in the other coset. Okay, so let me explain, um, let me give you a, a, a first look in the proof of this theorem. So here we have this quartic, so sorry, let me just go back and let me just mention that. So what I wrote there in, in green, um, sorry, what I, the picture in green is, is just the, the tangent cone of, of the quartic hypersurface at that point. So this is given by the equation A equals zero, A is the quadratic, quadratic form in green. Uh, and this is how the locally the singularity of D looks like. Okay, so 
Let me explain um, uh, the idea of the proof of this theorem. So let's start with our, our uh, surface in P3 and let's blow up the singular point P. So when I blow up the singular point P, so on, on P3, I, uh, after the blow up, I get a structure of P1 bundle over P2, which is just resolving the projection from P. Now, what happens to D? So after you blow up the point P, the, the surface D becomes uh, uh, smooth. So now this is a smooth uh, K3 surface. And if you look at the induced morphism to P1, to P2, this is a two to one cover. And this is just because we are projecting from the point P, the hypersurface has degree four with this double, with, the, with this P, which is a double point. So we get a two to one map to, to P2, which induces an involution tau on D tilde. Now we can describe this surface, this K3 surface, D tilde, uh, very explicit, very explicitly. And, and for instance, one can uh, easily show that uh, the automorphism group of D tilde is 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 uh, is, in, is generated by this involution tau. So um, so in this case we have this uh, this group homomorphism some from the birational group of P three to uh, to the birational group of of the singular surface D, which is precisely the automorphism group of the resolution, which is generated by tau. And moreover, one can easily show that uh, this uh, homomorphism is surjective by explicitly, for instance, explicitly uh, writing down uh, a Cremona transformation of P3 that stabilizes D and induces uh, tau. So this is an example. And in fact, even more, one can show that one can easily compute that the phi uh, square is the identity. So this is an involution. So what we've got so far is a, uh, an exact sequence like this, uh, which is split. Okay, so in order to, to prove the theorem, now we have to describe this kernel of this, uh, of this restriction homomorphism, which is, which is what I denote by, by G. And let me uh, tell you how we do this. So now there is the key point of the proof, and this is really uh, where all the all the work is, is to prove that given any birational uh, transformation of P3 that stabilizes D, it factors through a commutative di diagram like this. So after I, of course, it will induce the birational self map of the blow up of P3 at the point, but the main point here is that this birational self maps on P, on X will uh, preserve this uh, this vibration to to P two. In other words, uh, the key point is to show that any such birational transformation actually preserves the star of lines through the point P. And once we have this, it's very easy to conclude because then we notice that uh, we view this birational group of the pair as being the birational group of, uh, of X that stabilize uh, D. So such, automor such uh, birational maps will either fix D uh, pointwise or it will um, perform tau. So now the group of, uh, so G is just the group of birational self maps of X over P2 fixing D tilde pointwise. Now, um, D tilde, remember, this is a double cover of P2. So after a base change, what I get is a P1 bundle with two sections. And my G can be seen as the group of automorphism of this P1 that fix these two sections pointwise. And this is nothing but, um, but a form of GM over the function field of, um, of, the, of P2. Okay, so, uh, so we are left with the key point of the proof. And for that, I need to introduce some, some new, um, some, some more techniques. So the key, the key tool that we use in our study of uh, birational geometry of Calabria pairs is a factorization program uh, for birational maps of PN. So let me remind you the, that the Sarkisov program um, gives us a factorization of 
in particular by rational self map, uh, Cremona transformations of PN. So this was proved by Corti for three folds in 1995 and generalized to higher dimensions by Haken McKernan in 2013. So what the Sarkisov program does is, is, is a sort of a weak factorization theorem and weak in the sense that, okay, given any, uh, any birational self map of PN, there is a way to factorize it, but now uh, the varieties that appear in this sort of in this graph uh, may not be PN itself. So we may we must in order to have a factorization theorem, a nice factorization theorem, uh, we must uh, allow other rational uh, varieties. And these are the XIs are are more fiber spaces and the uh, and and, the, and the, the maps in green between them is what we call elementary links. So let me define first, so, okay, let me recall the definition of a Mori fiber space. So this is a vibration uh, from X to, to Y such that X has uh, terminal singularities, the relative Picard number is one, and the anti-canonical class of X is relatively ample. So these are nothing but the, the outputs of the, of the MMP when you start with a uh, uniruled variety. And in our case, uh, we are considering only a rational variety. So in this diagram, in fact, you should not think of these XIs by just varieties, but they, all of them come with a vibration. So, um, so this is the main, so this, this theorem holds for any birational self map of PN. And now we want to look at the case that we are considering where we are not only we have a birational map of PN, but we have this sort of volume preserving uh, condition that we want to, um, that we want to explore. So, uh, okay, sorry, before that, let me, uh, yes, I should explain to you what, what the elementary links are. So I will just explain to you in the case of surfaces and just, and just say a few words in the general case. So in the surface case, the Mori fiber spaces are just the P2 mapping to a point and uh, the here's a Brooks surfaces FM uh, as a view, there's a P1 bundle over, over P1. And in, in this case, the elementary links are, um, well, I can just start with P2 map into a point and then I blow up a point and then I get a F1, which is a P1 bundle over P1. Uh, the type two is, a, well, I start with a Hijabuk surface with a, map, with a morphism, a vibration to P1. I blow up one point in this, in this, uh, in this, in this surface, and then I contract the strict transform of the fiber through this point. And after doing this, I go to another Hirzebrook surface, which is F M plus or minus one, depending whether the point that you blew up in the beginning lies or not in the negative section. Okay, so this is the link of type two. And a link of type three is just the inverse of a link of type, of type one. And a link of type four is this, this very special one in this case, which is, is in the case where you have uh, F naught. So this is P1 uh, cross P1. And then this, uh, what this link does is, is, is just changes the factor that you were looking at. Okay, so, uh, so this would be just involution exchanging the factors. Okay, so in higher dimensions, so this is, again, this is coming from the minimal model program. And so in higher dimensions, we also have, um, we also have um, small, uh, small maps, uh, small contractions. And so here, this is how the link of type one looks like in higher dimensions. So again, we start with our Mori fiber space uh, X to S. And then I, uh, I do a divisorial extraction, which would be the analog of blowing up a point. But then, so if I do this, then Z over S has relative Picard, num Picard rank two. So in order to get the, the link, what we have to do is to contract the other uh, extreme array, but that turns out to be a small contraction. So this is why this phi, this phi appears. So I, I do a divisorial extraction, I perform, a finite sequence of flips, flops, and inverse flips until I get a Mori fiber space structure on X prime. Okay, and similarly, similarly for uh, for the other for the other links. Okay, so now 
let us go back to, to Calabi out there. So as I said, that factorization program is for any birational self map of PN. And now we want to look what happens in the case where we start also with a uh, anti-canonical hypersurface. So I, I remind you the definition of a Calabi out there. And now I will need to describe what are in this category of Calabi out there, what are the what are the morphisms? So this is what we call a volume preserving birational map. So if you have two Calabi-Yau pairs um, and a, uh, so X dx, Y dy, and if I have a birational map between X and Y, then it will induce, it will induce um, a, a, an isomorphism, a natural isomorphism in the space of uh, neuromorphic uh, N forms. And we say that the map is volume preserving if it sends the form associated to dx to the form associated to dy. And then, um, okay, so this is the notion of uh, volume preserving. And this, this admits, uh, so this is, okay, so this is, a, this, is a, this is again the definition, but this is not actually the work and definition that we use. Uh, there is a evaluative interpretation for this volume preserving condition, which is uh, the following. So if you have any, uh, so if you, you start with your, your uh, birational map between, between X and Y, and you take a log resolution, then uh, the evaluative criterion, criterion uh, asks that for every, uh, actually for every divisor on, on any resolution, but it's, it's enough to take one of them, then uh, the log discrepancies of these divisors uh, of these pairs x dx y dy coincide. So, so this is really the the, the working definition that that one uses. And and now I state the the volume preserving Sarkisov program. So this is a, a volume preserving um, version of the Sarkisov program, which was proved by Corti and Kalogiros in 2016. So they, they prove that a, a, any volume preserving birational map between Mori fiber cadabial pairs is a composition of volume preserving circuits of links. So what I mean by that is that you have your usual factory, you, you have your usual factorization and, and between the map uh, of the map from X naught to, to Xn. And this, uh, this program can be, this diagram exists uh, after, you know, there, there is a way to have such a diagram by um, introducing an anti-canonical divisor for each of these intermediate steps, Xi, such that all the links are volume preserving. And actually this is, a, so let me point out that this is, this is actually a very strong condition. So when we say that we have a, uh, volume, per, we, can, we can have a factorization like this, we are implicitly asking that each intermediate uh, step is again a Mori fibered calabial pair. So we have here restrictions on the singularities of, of Xi and the pair Xi Di. And so for instance, let me just, uh, this is, a, this is a, uh, an easy computation that one can do, which is to, if you take a, a a uh, D, a hypersurface of degree n plus one in, in P and a smooth hypersurface, then in, and you want to know which blow-ups are volume preserving. And, and this is an easy computation using valuations that the, uh, the blow-up along the smooth center Z is volume preserving. Uh, if it is volume preserving, then um, the Z must be contained in, in D and it must have co-dimension one in D, meaning co-dimension two on PN. So this is the only uh, blow up in this, in, in this case that, that uh, is volume preserving. So we see that we have um, strong, strong restrictions on what once you, you, you suppose you start with a map, then this gives us strong restrictions on what this map can be. Okay, so, um, so let me, having said that, let me, um, give you a um, the idea of the proof of theorem A. So the theorem A, I, I would just state it in the case of PN. I just rem remind you that uh, it was um, 
it had it had more general assumptions that the pair was a terminal and so on. But here, let's assume that we have a very general hypersurface of degree n plus one in Pn, and we want to prove that the birational group of uh, Pn is um, is just trivial. It's just the automorphism group, and so. We start by, okay, then let's assume that we have a birational self-map of Pn of the pair. And if it is not biregular, then it will admit a Sarkeesian factorization like this. And then let's see what happens in the, in the first step. So uh, as I said, um, if you, this is from the, from the exercise that I left in the previous slide, so if you start with the, you want to decompose by Sarkeesian links, the first step in the first link must be a divisorial extraction from Pn. And as I said, this turns out that this will have to be the blow up of a smooth center of co-dimension two in Pn that is contained in D. So this is a hypersurface in D. So you must start by uh, blowing up this hypersurface in D. But the, the very genericity condition assures us that this surface D, this hypersurface D, is, uh, is cut out. Actually, probably I, sh I should have put that the, the condition there that's actually that D is uh, terminal, not necessarily smooth. But in any case, so once you, um, once you uh, blow up this, uh, so the, the, our condition implies that this hypersurface of D is cut out by a hypersurface of Pn. So this D, so this center is a complete intersection of two hypersurfaces. And in, in this case, this blow up is very easy to describe. The, the, the Morricone of this, uh, of this uh, variety is easy to describe. And then after possibly some flips and flops, we have to contract this, this hypersurface, this strict transform of this hypersurface that cuts uh, the center in D. But then in this case, one can just compute and check that if you do this, this, this resulting um, pair, the, actually the, the resulting variety X1 has worse than terminal singularities. And so this is what we call a bad link. So the only possible link would have to start with the divisorial extraction, and then it would immediately link, lead to a, a singularity worse than the one that is allowed in the Sarkeesian program. So this is how uh, we prove uh, theorem A. So now let's uh, move to theorem B. <clears throat> so now D is a generic quadratic hypersurface with one singular point. Uh, and we want to prove this structure theorem on in the in the of the the group of birational maps. So uh, so we start by analyzing. If you start with an, a non biregular Primano transformation of of the pair, uh, then it will have to be composed as a sequence of Sarkeesian links. And uh, again, in this case. Um, Exactly as before, we could rule out the possibility that you start by um, blowing up a curve. And the only blow up in this case that is that would be volume preserving and, and, and yield a good link would be just the blow up of the singular point. So now this is volume preserving. And so this now produces um, a, a P1 bundle over P2. So this is what we call X. And D is the strict transform of, um, of D. And now, um, <clears throat> so we show that, okay, we have to start with, this is the first link in the factorization. And now we, we analyze with this, this D tilde is a K3 surface that we can describe completely. We can understand it's, uh, all its contractions and so on. And so we prove, and by understanding this, this, this K3 surface and <clears throat> understanding which, which, uh, in which ambient spaces it can live in, we show that the next um, Sarkeesian links in the factorization are all um, links of type two. So these are elementary transformations obtained by uh, blowing up a, a curve on X and contracting the vertical um, surface containing that curve and so on. So after a finitely many of this, uh, of these elementary transformations, then again, we come back to x d tilde, and then we have to contract it to to p three. So, so we we show that this that that 
any uh, volume preserving Sarkeesian factorization of psi must look like this. And notice that this now what I have in brown is exactly the diagram that we need um, in our proof when I described uh, the proof. Okay, so um, let me just end by, by saying that we actually study more than just the, uh, the birational group of the pair. So by understanding the birational geometry of the pair, we mean much more. So for instance, we one question is, so here we in, in both in the proof of theorem A and theorem B, we needed to understand and to classify what are all the possible um, Mori fiber, Mori fiber spaces or, or Calabial, Mori fiber Calabial pairs that can appear in such decomposition. So this comes to the, so this leads to this uh, definition of the pliability of, uh, of a Mori fiber Calabial pair. So this is the, this is the set of all Mori fiber Calabial pairs that admit a volume preserving um, birational map to, to XT. So here we take, we mod out by a natural uh, equivalence relation in this case, which is called square equivalence. And so this is the pliability. So this, this is telling us what are, um, what, what, what Mori fiber spaces can appear in, in a Sarkeesian factorization of, of a, a birational self map of this pair. And so for instance, in, in theorem A, uh, we, theorem A can be restated by saying that if you have a terminal pair uh, with Picard, where X has Picard number one, and the Picard group of D is just induced by restriction from, from the ambient X, then the pliability of the pair is just the pair itself. While in, um, in theorem B, uh, we, when we have a general quartic hypersurface with one A1 singular point, then the pliability now has two elements. So the P3 comma D itself and, and the, the pair obtained by blowing up the point. So this had this P1 bundle structure over P2 and the D tilde is just a strict transform. So this is the the pliability of the pair in uh, theorem B. And I would like to, start to, uh, to end by just stating our theorem C. So we also considered a more, uh, more degenerate case. So in theorem C, we consider a general quartic hypersurface now, now having uh, one A2 singularity of the point P. So we make the hypersurface more singular uh, and then it's, uh, we were very surprised to see how much more complicated and involved bi the birational geometry of the pair becomes. So we, what we have done <clears throat> in this case was to de determine the pliability of this pair. So again, just like in the case of one A1 singularity, we have these two elements, the P3 and D itself. And this uh, P1 bundle over P2 obtained by the blow up of the point. But now, um, now more Mori fibered Calabial pairs appear. So, for instance, in this case, we had this P1 bundle. Then, after one can make uh, some special uh, elementary transformation, blowing up a curve, contracting the strict transform of the vertical uh, surface through it. And, uh, and, and, and go to another P1 bundle over P2, which is just the, the, the resolution of the cone over the Veronese surface. And then in this, in this way, we can just contract the, the minus two, the, the, the P2 with, with the normal bond, the minus O minus two. And then we get some other, actually we can do this in two different ways. And then in this way, we get two, um, um, non-equivalent uh, Mori fibered Calabial pair. So the, the ambient space is the weighted projective space uh, P1112 and the D5 is a, um, a, a quintic uh, non-canonical surface. And, and now once we are in this surface, we can ask, okay, so what, what other links 
could be produced from this weighted projective space. And in fact, here, well, of course you can, well, if you blow up the singular point, you sort of go back to where you came from. Uh, but then here, it turns out that it's possible to, um, to blow up many, many curves to obtain um, nice and nice links. So we basically classified what are all the, all the curves that are contained in, in this, in this uh, anti-canonical hypersurface uh, that can be blown up to produce um, new links in, in uh, new links. And then actually what we get is a many of them. So we get a three parameter family of uh, type X4, D3, 4. So this is the X4 here is a quartic hypersurface on a, on a weighted projective space. And, and D is the complete intersection of X4 with a cubic. And also um, a six parameter family of the form X4, D2, 4. So X4 is a quartic hypersurface in a, this weighted projective space. And uh, the D is an anti-canonical hypersurface in X4. So it's cut out by a uh, quadrant. Um, OK, so this, this, uh, so these elements come from the, the three parameter family and the six parameter family of curves that actually can be blown up and, and produce something, something nice. Um, OK, so I guess this is what I wanted to tell you. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to stop the video and we have some time for questions.